You ever wonder why Mashiach is the great procrastinator is the Mashiach? <laughs> Would you say that? I mean, Achakelo, Achakelo, Bechol Yom Sheyavo. We wait for him, but why is he so slow in coming? The answer is found in this week's parsha. But before you go to this week's parsha, you got to look in your art scroll sitters. In the art scroll sitter, at the end of the davening shachrit, there's ani mamins. There's ani mamins at the end. It's page 180. 180 in the little art scroll sitter. Ebenezer, tell me if I'm right. Page 180. Am I right? No, it's 179. So how come here it's 180? No, I'm, I'm talking about the 12th one. I'm talking about the 12th one. Don't mix me up. It's page 180. I'm talking about the 12th Animamin. That's page 180, yes? Yes. Not the Ten Commandments. Not the Ten Commandments. One, on top of it, on top of that page. On top of the Ten Commandments. Page 180 on top. Animamin. The 13 Animamins. Yeah, you have it? Animamin, Animamin. Be'amuno shelema. Be'viat amashiach. Right? You see that? Page 180, you bet on top? You bet. The 12th Animamin. The Afapi sheyitma meya. Even though he procrastinates, who's the he? The Messiah. What's a better word than procrast? He he what? He uh, he delays. He delays. He lingers. He procrastinates, but he's going to come. Why does he procrastinate? That word Yismameya. Where does it come from? Well, it comes from this week's parsha. Bereshis Yutet Posuk Tezayin. Bereshis 19.16. Background music. Malachim come to save Lot from Hiroshima. I mean from Sodom. It'll be nuked. And they tell him, come, get out, get out, run for your life. The Posuk says, Vayisma Ma. He delayed and he lingered and he procrastinates. <coughs> Who is the ancestor of Mashiach, of an Ezra? Lot. Lot. Through, through, Moab root. So the same word, Mashiach will come, but Shehisma Meya, it's in his DNA. Yehuda, can you give it over? No? It's in his DNA, courtesy of Ben Sian Lehrer. Finally, he got out of there, but he lingered, he delayed, and since he's the progenitor, the ancestor, Lot is of Mashiach, so therefore Mashiach has this in DNA. He will come, but he's going to what? Procrastinate and delay the same word, Sheyisma Meya. Isn't that incredible? Uh, Beresh 1916. That was a very good year. My father was born in that year, 1916. 1916. 1916. Bereshis 1916. Yael says that Yismahama. He delayed, and that's where the Animamin comes from. The Mashiach will come, but he can't help himself. I remember that song, Can't Help Myself. He has to delay and linger because he comes from a delayer and a lingerer. You need to know that, Avi, that Mashiach comes from Lot through root, Moab. What's, his de what's the delay here in this second? But he doesn't want to leave because he has to leave his money behind. He has to leave his married daughters behind. He doesn't want to leave Hiroshima. I mean, uh, Sodom. So the only connection. So he's lingering, but he has that in his DNA, you know. So Mashiach. Okay. Then finally, he he the Malachim they pull him out. And Baruch 1917 says, when they're taken out of the city, the Malach says to him, "Run! if you want to run for your life, don't look back. <laughs> now, Daniel, we don't need to know what the Malach said to Lot some 3,800 years ago on some lonely road outside of Las Vegas, I mean, uh, Sodom. The Torah, Yael, is GPS. What do I need to know, Yehuda, what the Malach said if you want to save your soul, don't look back. Why is that important for the year 2018? 
Because if it wasn't, it wouldn't be here. I care what the Malach said to Lot. So my Rebbe Rappam Zatzal said, no, the Malach is speaking to me and you and you and me, otherwise in the Torah. If you want to save your soul, don't keep looking back. Because that's Satan's trap. I'm going to do tshuva. I'm such a low life. I did so many sins. Forget about it. Stay in the massage parlor. I mean in the pool room. There's no hope for you. So the Malach is saying, if you want to save your soul, everyone has skeletons in the closet. Don't keep looking back to your evil past. Focus ahead. Don't fall into Yush. How do you say Yush in English? Despair. Despair. That's Satan's trap. Wow, what a message. What a message. Wow. Avram, you missed a point? Wow. Ooh, uh, you have to go to the videotape. What a message. You want to save your soul? Don't keep looking back. Focus forward, as Avram Berkowitz says, onwards and upwards. But King David seems to contradict me because in Psalm 51, he says, Chatasi negdi tamit. My sin is always what in front of me. If Ezra mixed up over here, I just told you that the Malo said, if you want to save your godly soul, don't keep looking back. And King David says in Psalm 51, my sin is always in front of me. Huh? Move on, get a life. King David, what are you talking about? You had a question on the table? Daniel. It's a bomba kasha. The answer is, King David the Tshuva Mehava Avram. That sin that King David did is now what? It's a win. Finished. Hello. So my sin is in front of me. I have rehabilitated my sin. It, who loves you, baby? How much God loves us. You can take a sin and turn it into what? Win. A win. I can rejuvenate, rejuvenate my sins or recycle them. The Tshuva Mehava. So now King David says, yes, that's it. That what was a sin has now been turned into a merit. And King David wrote his most beautiful psalms after he sinned with Bathsheba. It's not a license to sin, don't get me wrong. Everybody sins. What are you going to do about it? Will you, will you what? Fall into Yush? Chas v'sholem? Al tabit achrecha. Onwards and upwards. That's pretty incredible. What a powerful pasuk. If you want to save your godly soul, says the Malach, don't keep looking back. Don't keep looking back. Pretty incredible, huh? Uh. Now, <clears throat> there's a strange Rashi in this week's Parsha. Lot risks his life to do chesed. He takes in these guys. He doesn't know that they are what? Malachim, he mm -hmm. thinks they're vagabonds. He risks his life, takes them in, because you're taking a guest in Sodom, no. you're playing with your life. By taking, and yet, the, by taking the Jews during the Holocaust. That's right, like beautiful. Taking a Jew, like hiding a Jew in the Holocaust. Beautiful, you the analogy. And yet he does it. Ezez chus. You would think that would be the chus that what? Save that would save him. But Rashi says no. A strange Rashi. Rashi says in Bereshia's 19, 22. Why was Lot saved? Strange Rashi. Because Lot knew that uh, Sarah was not Abraham's sister. You know that Lot and Sarah are brother and sister. You know that? No. You didn't know that? Good no. thing you came today. So the Medjish right. says that Lot and Sarah were brother and sister. So he knew that Avram is lying when he, when he came to Mitzrayim and he said that what? I'm uh, my sister. He could have said, hey, my uncle's lying. Right? But it wasn't so, he kept his mouth shut. And because he didn't rat out his uncle, that's why he got saved from what? Sodom. Does that make sense to you? Well, that's what Rashi says. I mean, the schus of Achnosas Archim, that didn't save him. Well, he risked his life to, to take uh, hospitality, that's not good enough. You have to go fishing because he didn't rat out his uncle. Huh? So this question was asked of uh, Victor Miller Zatzal. So I'll give you his answer, then I'll give you mine. He said that even what we think is an insignificant act, he didn't rat out his uncle, he could have. He could have, because his uncle was very wealthy, his uncle had no heirs, heirs, 
So he, uncle's gone, who inherits all the, the vast fortune? He does. So he, okay, even what you think is an insignificant act, you do something positive. Even though you think it's nothing in God's eyes, it's what? It's a big deal. Any act you do, positive, you think it's a small deal, the big boss says what, Sarah? It's a big deal. Big deal. Remember that story, big deal? Yeah. In Gula. Yeah. That's why Vigdor Miller Zechus Hagavachos answer. What a powerful Rashi. But let me give you my answer, okay? Lot was the ancestor of Ruth, right? In the book of Ruth, she makes a very strange statement. Ruth does. She comes out with all of this grain. Remember? She hit the bonanza. You know Judah? So Naomi asked her, hey girl, who did all of this chesed for you? You know what she says in the book of Ruth? She says, Ruth says, Ho'ish ashani asito imo chesed hayom Boaz. So Naomi said, girl, you've been out in the sun too long. Take a pill and lie down. I asked you, who is the man that did this great chesed for you? She says, Vatomer Naomi. Vatomer Ruth to Naomi. Ho'ish, Yudah. The man that I did for him chesed today, his name was Boaz. Say, hey girl, are you confused? So the Talmud learns from here, Ebenezer, that more than the rich guy does for the poor guy, the poor guy does what? For the rich guy. So when the rich guy gives a check or he does chesed for a poor guy, the rich guy should tell the poor guy what? Thank you. Thank you. Why? When you do chesed for somebody, who are you doing it for, Yael? Who taught us that? Ruth. That's what she said. The grain that he gave me, Boaz, will be gone in a four or five days, right? A week. The check will be eaten up. But the schus that I gave him, the schus of chesed that I gave him, will be his forever. So who did chesed for whom? She said, you can check the text. You read the English, you won't get it. But the Hebrew says, amazing. Remind me, Shavuos, to show you. Shavuos. But Toimer, Ho'isha, Ashani, Asiti, Imo, Chesed, Hayom. The man that I did Chesed for him today by taking the grain, his name was Boaz. Where did she learn this from? Who's a great grandpa? Who's Ruth's great grandpa? Lot! It's in her DNA. So when Lot did chesed, he did a lot of chesed. But who did he figure he's doing it for? Himself. For him it was easy. Because he knew doing chesed, it's for myself. Easy come, easy go. The Mishnah says, Lefum tsara agravam. According to the pain is the gain. So for him it was easy. The reward for a mitzvah, Daniel, is the effort. How do you say the schwitz? The effort that it costs you emotional pain or mental anguish or financial, whatever. That's the reward. For him, doing chesed was easy because he knew that you chesed for somebody, it's really what? Boomerang. Here, Lot, Remedia says, had a tremendous craving for money. If he would have sold out his uncle, he would have been an instant millionaire. No heirs. For them, that was a struggle. So Avram, for him, that was a greater mitzvah because he struggled with himself. For chesed, for him, was a no-brainer. How do you say in English, a no-brainer? Because that's what was in his DNA. That's where Ruth gets it from. So what did he learn from here? You do chesed for somebody, you're actually doing it for yourself. You visit a sick guy in the hospital. So when he leaves, he, you know, he feels good. Then when you leave him, he's sad again. Right? Or a shiva call, loyalenu. He's happy, you leave, he's sad again, but the chesed that he gave you by receiving the favor, that doesn't wear off. You invite the guy for a meal, you give him a Chinese meal. Chinese, a lot of GM, what's it called, glucose. In 12 minutes, you're hungry again, right? Chinese dinner. So that he get hungry again, but he gave you that opportunity, that chesed, that's yours forever. When you give a check, you know, to a poor guy, what do you say, thank you for accepting? Yeah. Who taught us that? Ruth, but where did she get it from? Yeah. Great grandpa Lot. Lot was no slouch. Mashiach comes from him. But Lot learned from Abraham. Okay. Okay. Wow.
pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. Actually doing it for yourself. It's called the boomerang effect. How do you say boomerang in Hebrew? Boomerang. <laughs> boomerang. Boomerang. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <coughs> yeah, it's, really, it's really true, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difficult Aftorah, very difficult Aftorah. <clears throat> you have the story of the Isha Shunamit, Isha Gedola. Isha, a great lady. She had everything, but she couldn't have a child. So, Elisha, she was very kind to the prophet Elisha. You know the story? No? Well, it's in the book of Kings, the Kings 2, chapter 4. Right? She built him an attic apartment. She showed this great man of God, Elisha, Isha Elohim, the great Navi. She was so kind to him. So he says to her, what do you need? Right? What do you need? Right? So she was a little shy. So Elisha's uh, Shamus, Gechaz, he said she needs a child. She needs a child. She's old. Her husband's old. Ties it with the Pasha. Right, Eliezer? Uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah are old, couldn't have a child. Here, centuries later, this is Shunamid lady and her husband were old, couldn't have a child. So, Alicia promises her, says to her, in one year's time from now, very similar to what God says, what the angels say, in one year's time, at chaveket ben, you will be hugging a child. The word chaveket means hugging a child, and Chazal say this child who actually died and was resurrected, he was the great prophet Chavakuk. The Goyim say Habakuk? Chavakuk. Because Elisha said, in one year's time, at Choyveket Ben, you will be what? Hugging a child. So he says to her, You're going to have a child after all these years. What should, should he have said? What should she have said? Oh, thank you, great rabbi. Bless you. You know what she says to him? He's sitting down. He says, no, man of God, don't lie to me. That's how you talk to the Godel Hador. Imagine the Rali Yashiv, uh, would give you a bracha like that. This is Isha Elohim. He was a, 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 the greatest Navi after Elio. He was twice as great as it. Remember? Remember, Elisha asked, give me twice your. He was twice as great as Elio. And she's, she should have said, oh, great rabbi, thank you. She says, Oh, no, man of God, don't lie to your servant. What? <laughs> Hello? And why tell me about it? I mean, what's the message? What's the message? Well, the answer is found later on. She has the child, the child dies. Then she comes running to the Navi and she says to him, Did I ask a child for my master? Didn't I tell you, don't deceive me? She, Isha Gedola. She was no Novi, but she had Ruach HaKodesh. She knew that the child that she's going to have will not live. So this was the great theological debate between her and Alicia. She said, a sick child who will die, better not to have him altogether. That's what she said. And the Novi told her, you're wrong. Any child, sick, healthy, even for only live for a short time, that's a precious, precious neshama. And every moment you have them is an eternity in Olam Haba. That's what Alicia taught, right? Even a sick child that will not live, as long as you can have him, you have to cherish and appreciate every moment. I know. This was the great theological debate between Isha Gedola and the prophet Elisha. That's pretty incredible. So the child dies, and then he does the great Triata Meitim. He resurrects his dead child. He resurrects his dead child. So you see that the Tanakh here teaches that we should appreciate any gift that we have and children the most precious gift and no one can put a price tag on the value of life sick or healthy every moment of life is precious and should be cherished and, and appreciated the child, the child got resurrected but 
But he, li he, he lived. He lived, right? He lived and became the great prophet Chavakuk. Oh became the great prophet Chavakuk, Chavakuk Ben. Now, the Novi tells us, how did he resurrect the child? He lay on top of the child and he put his mouth on the mouth of the child. Why did he do that? Couldn't he just snap his fingers and resurrect the child? Vayosan piv al piv. You would have to remind you of. Mouth to mouth resuscitation. Says the Radak. That all miracles are grounded in Teva. Yes. Mouth to, it looked like he was doing mouth to mouth resuscitation. That's what it looked like. But the child was dead, but he had to go through the motions because all Nisim are grounded in Teva. Why is that? You know, the greatest ness of all, the uh, splitting of the Red Sea. It says God sent Hurricane Katrina to blow all night. I mean, Hurricane Michael, maybe? What's the latest one? Look at the text title. It says God sent a powerful hurricane to blow all night. Why couldn't God just snap his fingers and, and split the Red Sea? So says the Abarbanel and the Redak, the same idea. All miracles are grounded in Teva. A hurricane blowing all night can divide the waters. Moses called it right. So you see, Teva and Nes, and therefore the Navi has to tell us over here that he put his mouth on the mouth of the child and he resurrected the dead child. As his master Leo had done to another dead child. So what is the message for us? What is the message for us? Huh? That there will be triatamatim. There will be triatamatim. We have examples, right? Many samples throughout Tanakh that the dead will be resurrected. That will be the greatest miracle of all. That's going to happen at the end of time. That will happen at the end of time. But we have to have faith. Exactly. We have we to have faith. We will not believe won't get up. What? Those who don't believe it won't happen, right? Right? Now, Abraham planted an A-shell. He planted an A-shell and he called there by the name of Hashem. What has planting a tree got to do with calling the name of Hashem? It says he planted a tree. A tree grows in Brooklyn? No, a tree grows in Pisgah Zev. Uh, he planted a tree in Beersheba. Remember the book, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn? No, you don't remember? And he called the name of, what has the name of Hashem got to do with the planting a tree? It says the great vassal of Echik. Avram said, you see that beautiful tree? You want to see God? Look at the tree. The flowering of the tree. The blossoming. The fruit and the odor and the flowers. How it blossoms and then it dies in, in, in the winter. And in the spring it what? Comes back. That's a Kurdish Baruch Hu. God controls every leaf of that tree. Mm. Every blossom, when it blossoms and when it falls, and when each yeah. fruit is ripened, Kodesh Baruch Hu, you can see the God of the universe in a tree. And therefore, the Deuteronomy 17 says, Ki Adam eats Hasadeh. The human being is compared to one tree. tree. Right? The human being needs a lot of TLC to grow. A tree needs a lot of TLC to grow, right? TLC. If you don't talk to your plants, it will die. If you neglect your children, never neglect your tree. It's amazing. But this is the Rav Salvechik's word. But the question that Rav Salvechik asked is a bomb question. We know that Abraham was a great debater, a great theologian. The Medrash is full of stories of his preaching and teaching. Got thrown into the fiery furnace and how he debated this one in debate, CNN, Fox News, he debated all the great philosophers of his time. How come the written Torah is totally silent, Yehuda? The only happenings of Avram, what are recorded, or what? Only his chesed deeds. Nothing about his teaching and preaching. Isn't that strange? In the written Torah, you won't find one, one Musar speech. How do you say Musar speech? One uh, the theological debate. Avram was a great debater, and he made so many, so many converts. How come it's not in the written Torah? Yael, what's going on? seems like a Watergate. Remember Watergate? You're not from New York, you don't know. What, what's written in the Torah? Only Abraham's what? Chesed deeds. What about his preaching and teaching? That's a bomb kasha from Bombland. One minute. Says the great Vash Talavechik. There's a Apostle Kuntilim 89. Olam chesed yebane. The world was built 
The world is a stage. Who said that? Before uh, Shakespeare. Well, King David said in Psalm 89. The world is a stage that we should do chesed one for the other. Says the great Basal Vechik. Should I quote him? Torah, Torah is not theology. What does theology mean, you know? Torah is not theology. Torah is doing chesed. So even though Abraham was a great theologian and a great debater and a great preacher and a teacher, what's recorded, Abi? His chesed deeds. What a message, the great Rav Salavechik. What a message. Right? God says, action! Great theology, fine, but I want you to duplicate Abraham's chesed. And remember, you're doing chesed for, for another guy, you're actually doing chesed for the guy in the mirror. Oh. Yes? When a gadol adol is niftah, right? Beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what, the, what Dr. Hackett said? Perfect. That's right. Beautiful. Great man passes away. Even though he knew Shas backwards and forwards, you would have, what did they mention at the funeral? His chesed. They learned from Father Abraham. What a message. What a message. Wow. Powerful message. The Mishnah says, the Iker is not darshaning, the Iker is what? Remember the Mishnah, we looked it up. What does Medish mean? Darshaning is not the Iker, what's the Iker? Doing. Maise. Who taught us that? Father Abraham. And Lot, let's not forget him. We forget, Mashiach comes from Lot. Abraham, you don't that. Without Lot, there's no Messiah. Because without Lot, there's no Moab. Without Moab, there's what? There's no root. And without root, there's no King David. Hmm. Let's not forget that. Um, yet what? Nobody calls the children wow. after his name. What? Well, yet we don't call our kids nobody Lot. Calls it and we don't call our kids Lot. Nobody. Bila asked a bomb kasha from Bombland. We call our kids Noah, even though he wasn't Jewish. Why don't we call our kids Lot? Bila hit a home run. Yeah, your wife hit a home run, Daniel. You play baseball? No, you're from well, England. You wouldn't know. The the story was the end of the so what? So what? Everybody makes mistakes, and he was drunk. He didn't know what he was doing. And two nations had to come out from him, Moab, without him getting drunk and sleeping with the with the daughter. There would be no Messiah. And that's bizarre, and in, in its own right, couldn't find God, find the desire, the the, the, the Mashiach in a, in, a, in, a, in a nicer way. Couldn't he find the best Yaakov girl to be the Mashiach, the mother of the Mashiach? He had to be. Moab, the symbol of immorality, in such a convoluted way. That's a talk for all. Sure, let's talk. But uh, very strange. God tells the prophet Isaiah, my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts, you'll never figure it out. Forget about it. Right? But this is what God wanted. Right? Lot, if he wouldn't sleep with his daughter, there would be no Messiah. Very bizarre and strange. Okay? Where was I? Um... <clears throat> Lot. So how can we don't name our kids Lot? Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes a sin. Who doesn't make it? King David didn't, didn't sin with Bacheva. We call our kids David. Exactly. Who has the bomb kasha Ooh. It's because when they have a lot of kids, they wouldn't know which one. Uh, what? What? Which one? <laughs> so I have an answer. Okay? I have an answer. To answer Billah's kasha, Shelley, I will ask another. Because the Jew answers a question with what? Question. Why not? If you read the text, it looks like Lot was a greater chesed person than Uncle Abraham. Do you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Because the Malachim come to Abraham. Rashi says he thought they're vagabonds. Does he invite them into the house? He said, you guys sit in the backyard. I'll bring you out your roast beef sandwiches. Actually, it was a tongue on rye. He didn't invite him into the house. Lot later on looks like he's a greater about chesed, Yael. Come into the house, come in, come in. So the Ramchal asked the question, it looks like Lot was a greater Baal Chesed than whom? Than his uncle. So why are we called, uh, why isn't he the father of the Jewish people, Lot? Says the Ramchal. Avram, you sitting down? What a message. These guys, Avram thought they're vagabonds. I'm going to invite these guys, I don't know them from Adam, into my house. Maybe they'll molest my wife, harass my wife, she's beautiful. 
Make sure my chesed does not interfere with Sholem Bayez. What a message. You have to have balance. You want to do chesed, 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 great. But if it's going to cost you Sholem Bayez and your wife won't like it. So Avram did the medium Avram. He said, you guys, he didn't call them vagabonds, but they looked like that. You guys, you know, uh, I didn't make up the living room yet. It's, you know, she's washing the floors. You sit in the backyard and I'll bring you out the meal. Gonna put his wife in jeopardy? Who knows these guys are? Lot's chesed was reckless. Absolutely. Wild. Lighting these guys into the home? You have daughters and a wife? That's not Judaism. Oh, that's that's not Judaism. That's why we don't name our kids Lot, to my humble opinion, Billah. You're going to be a tzaddik on your wife's plates? How do you say that in English? A tzaddik on your wife's shoulders? By putting her in jeopardy, maybe? And that's not Yahadut. Therefore, Lot is not the father of the Jewish people. And that's why we don't name our kids Lot. But they named kids a lot worse things after. Mm. Name after Nimrod, right? Nimrod. 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 He says, we know in the two postures in the Torah, Aviezer, uh, uh, Aviezer, Aviezer. Next door, it has to be what? <coughs> very strong connect, very strong. <coughs> Avra makes a peace treaty with the king of PLO. In those days, he's not called Arafat, he's called what? Avimelech. Uh, same name, right? Same address. Uh, only the players have been changed to protect the innocent. 3,800 years ago, the king of the PLO, the terrorist Avimelech, Avram makes a peace treaty with him and he gives him parts of the land of Israel and they sign an Oslo agreement and, and he gives him seven sheep. And right after that, it says right after that, God tortured Abraham and he told him, take your son and kill him. You imagine the agony Abraham went through, Avram, how many days did you go through that agony? But three days Avram thought he has to kill his beloved only son. Why did he deserve that anguish and that pain and suffering? You're sitting down, says the Rajbam a thousand years ago. God said, I promised you the entire land of Israel, entire land of Israel to you and your children. What right do you have to give parts of the Holy Land to Arafat? I mean, Avimelech. What's with you, Abraham? I promised to you and your son. You're giving parts of the land that's supposed to be to your son? Take him and kill him. So the Rashbam says, Bila, that the anguish and the agony of the Akeda was a punishment. Rashbam said it, you can take it to the bank. Rashi's grandson. A punishment for ceding parts of the Holy Land. Rav Khanna would quote this Rashbam. What does the word Akeda remind you of? Smoke, fire, blood. And ashes. What do you have at every terrorist attack? Smoke and fire and blood. When the buses were blowing up. That's what you get when you give parts of your land to your enemy. Loyaleinu, you get Akeda. What a message of the Holy Rajbam. How many Jews were blown to bits because of the Oslo treaties? Wouldn't they learn the mistake that Abraham made? My Sabbath similar bonim Avram, what to do, and also says Ramban, what not to do. Who did Avram make that deal with? The king of the PLO. Who was it? Avi Melech. Abu Mamzer, then he was called Avi Melech. Same address, Gaza, same address. I mean, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a bad movie that keeps keep repeating itself. Gaza, the land of the Plishtim. And you're giving him all, and you're opening up, you're sending him all the trucks and the ambulance. What are you sending him? Uh, fuel and medicine. Uh, we're crazy. crazy. Tons of. of <laughs> it's unbelievable. Hello? Learn Rashbam. Unbelievable. Rav Khanna Zechet Salik what a. He had the courage to speak up. Anyway, but. Akeda. The Akeda. 
very difficult parsha. Abraham pleads for the Sodomites. He pleads and he argues and he bargains with God. He says, God, how dare the judge of the entire universe shall not do justice? How dare you kill the tzaddik and the rasha? So the Sodomites, he goes to bat, Sarah. When God says, take your own son and kill him, he doesn't say boo. You don't think that's bizarre? The same complaints that he made for what? For Saddam, he should have what? Made for his own son. And he bargains. That's why Jews are great bargainers, right? They learn from Abraham, right? Jews are great bargainers. He bargains with Hashem. And he bargains with Hashem. And he argues with Hashem. Talks very strongly. Does Hashem fire him? No. Rasavechik said, when did God say you're the father of the Jewish people? When? I would say, that's how you talk to God? You're fired. No. So Rasavechik said, God said, Mazel Tov. Now, you showed me courage. Now you're the father of the Jewish people. But he said, Anoichi offer Beifer. If I'm a dirt bag, then how dare I talk to God like that? Abraham seems to contradict himself. He says, God, how dare you to do such a thing to kill the righteous with the wicked? I can't let you do it. You judge of all the earth. Will you destroy the righteous and the wicked? And then he says, I'm a dirtbag. If I'm a dirtbag, how can you talk to God like that? Hmm? You hear a question on the table? Make up your mind. Are you a dirtbag or are you a chutzpahnik? Talks to God very strongly, Avram. Very strongly you talk to God. And you don't get fired, you get a medal. So the Kotzka Rebbe would say, that's why Jews were created, human beings were created with two hands. Why have two hands? A person can manage with one hand. Kotzka Rebbe. He says, in one hand you have to hold the Anoichi Ofa Be'efer. I'm a dirt bag. In the other hand, you have to hold the Shvili Nivra Olam. I can argue with God and I can question God and I give him my peace of my mind. <gasps> and the trick in life is to know what? What? When to open up which hand? That's what it's all about. When to open which you got the whole world. When to open up which hand? If I'm a dirt bag and I'm a zero, I might as well be a beach bum. Doesn't matter what I do, who cares? Then which hand do you open up? Bishvili Nivra Olam, the whole universe is great only for me. Alright? So Avram knew when to utilize the offer of Eifer, and he knew when to speak up and fight like a lion and bargain and argue. The question is why he didn't do that for his own son. Avram, I don't have a good answer. Help me, please. For his own son. Hmm? Any suggestions? What? So I have one answer. I, the question is better, I think. But the answer is as follows. Here for Sodom, God is telling him, listen, Abraham, I want to destroy the city. So Abraham is thinking, you need my permission? You want to destroy the city, what are you telling me for? Obviously, you want my input. I'll tell you. I don't think it's right. You don't need my permission. Why are you telling me you want to destroy Sodom? So Abraham is thinking, you want my input, right? So I'll tell you, I don't think it's right. I don't think so. I don't think you should do it. By the Akedah, God wasn't asking for suggestions. God said, take your son and kill him. It's not a suggestion. I'm not asking your opinion like by Saddam. I'm giving you a direct command. So therefore, Aaron felt that what? That he had nothing to say. That's the only answer I have. If you guys have a better answer, I'll, I'll be... Um... Question, Rabbi? Yes. You hear my answer? I hear your answer. Okay. Um... The, the, the commandment for Reb, for Abraham to uh, take his son and kill him. Yes. It's like a mitzvah. And the other plan is uh, to plan. It's a mind. Yeah, but, it, but the words he said, shall the judge of all the earth, is that right? To kill the tzaddik and Russia? Who's a greater tzaddik than Yitzchak? If these sodomites are tzaddikim, what is Yitzchak? So that complaint he should have said for Yitzchak. Who's a bigger tzaddik? Mm -hmm. But he felt he couldn't say anything because God was not asking an opinion, a suggestion, like Saddam, giving a direct command. Okay? Okay. Very difficult. But anyway, after he bargains with Hashem, it says so clearly, 
Derech Hashem. That's the Derech Hashem. Lasot Sadaka and Mishpat. Lasot Sadaka and Mishpat. But before that, Abraham thinks that they're three uh, strangers, right? So he feeds them, then he, then he puts them on the road, L'Shalcham, then he what? He escorts them. Why does he escort them? So Rashi says he thought that they are what? Guess? And the Mitzah Eishel, what does Eishel stand for? Achila, Shtia, Levia. Food, drink, and escort. So it says Avram gave him food and drink, and it also points out he went to escort them because he thought that they're what? Strangers, travelers, and therefore the mitzvah, Nosas Archim, also includes a lot escort. People don't know. At least 10 feet out the front door. At least. That's part of the mitzvah. Not only the part of the mitzvah, but the Rambam says as follows The Rambam says, Detschar Levia Merubim in Hakol. Someone invites me, hospitality, I take the food and the drink, forget the escort, right? But the Rama says that the schar halaviyah, Ruben called the greatest reward for the balabayas is not the food and the drink, it's what? It's the escort when you walk them out the front door. But why? I'll take the steak and the wine, the chopped liver and the fish and the herring, keep your escort. Why does Rambam say that the greatest reward is for the escort? First you have to give food, you can't just give them the escort. You have to give them food and drink, but then, the kicker is the escort. That's the greatest. He doesn't say why. If he would, I'd be unemployed, right? So let me tell you my re reason why it's the greatest reward. The food and the drink, Abraham, that's for the goof. Give the guy a nice meal, right? In a few hours, I'll be hungry again. Even a very nice meal. The food and the drink, that relates to the goof, to the body. That's temporary. After a while, they got very hungry and thirsty again. But the uh, levia, that's covered for the neshama. When you escort the guy, you're giving cover to his neshama. You're giving cover to his halo. That doesn't wear off like a Chinese dinner. I mean, you a guy Chinese lunch? A lot of MSG, right? So the, the levia, that's shayach to the neshama. And that hano remains with the neshama forever, unlike the food and drink, which is only what? Which is only temporary. That's pretty amazing. Hmm? So a lot of people do chilo uh, v'shtiya, but they forget to escort the guest out the front door, and uh, that is super important to do that, because you make the guy feel good. You appreciate my company, and you're walking me out, that means you want me to come back. You're giving cover to the neshama, and, that's, and that is what... Uh, that's forever. That's forever. <clears throat> God says about Abraham, he does the derech Hashem, tzedakah and mishpat. So what's a derech Hashem? Tzedakah and mishpat. What does tzedakah mean? Charity. Righteousness and mishpat. That's the derech Hashem. Doesn't say anything about the, uh, theolo theology. It's amazing. The Dera Hashem is Tzedakah and Mishpat. That's what it says. Incredible. To do righteous and justice to, to fellow human beings, that's the Dera Hashem. That's pretty amazing. Why is that? Why is that Adon Lechavero the Iker? Because when you do a mitzvah between man and God, you're pleasing God, right? You're putting on tefillin, you're shaking a lulav, right? You're blowing a shayfa, you're pleasing God. When you do a chesed for a fellow human being, you're pleasing him and his tzalem him. And the shechina that lives inside of him. So it's a twofer. Any ben olam lechaveroi is twice as good because you're pleasing your fellow human being and you're also pleasing the part of God that lives inside of him to his Salam Elohim. So that's the Derech Hashem. As the Balatanya said, how do you love God? You love a fellow Jew. I remember you saying, love a fellow Jew, he's just like you. By loving a fellow Jew, you're automatically what? Loving Hashem. That's the Derech Hashem. 
ואז חסד, חסד עם, עם, עם משפט. די עקידה. די עקידה, very difficult פרשה, right? די עקידת יצחק. What does the word עקידה mean? אבן עזר, what does the word עקידה mean? Tying up, time, time up. עקידת יצחק. But before that, this idea that Avram made this peace treaty with the king of the PLO, which he shouldn't have done, he gave him seven sheep. He gave him a present, seven sheep, as a sign of the peace treaty, and he see the parts of the land of Israel. Says Beresh's Rabbah, because Avraham gave the king of the terrorist PLO seven sheep as a present, as a sign of appeasement, and centuries later, in the book of Judges, the Plishtim, They captured the Holy Ark and hold it for how many months? Seven. Seven. Kawinki Dinky? That's what Barashas Rabbah says. So the Plishtim, right? The descendants of this PLO guy, they captured the Ark for seven months as a punishment because Avram had no right to make this appeasement to the PLO. The Plishtim, they're called Plishtim. So we should have learned not to make that same mistake. That's why the Torah records it. Avram, you know, he made a mistake. And that's the beauty of the Torah, Shelley. There's no cover-ups. The Torah exposes the sins of our superstars. No other religion does that. Only Judaism does that. Exposes the sins of our superstars. That's how we know that it's our Yehadot is true blue. Avram, there's no cover-ups, right? No cover Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. Lech Lecha. God says, please take, please take your son that you love, Yitzchak, v'lech Lecha. What does a Lech Lecha mean? I thought we'd finish with Lech Lecha. I thought we'd finish with Lech Lecha. Last week's passage of Lech Lecha. And go for yourself to the land of Maria and take him and kill him. Lech Lecha. Why Lech Lecha again? Many people think that Lech Lecha ends at Ben-Gurion Airport. You made Aliyah, that's it. Kick off your shoes. No, Lech Lecha. It's a long and winding road and Eretz Yisrael is filled with tests and trials and tribulations. You have to continue to move on. You come to Eretz Yisrael and all the problems and all the obstacles were there for what, Avram? To help me grow. All of us have our personal akedas, some bigger, some smaller, so you can't get around it. That's part of the spiritual growth. When the going gets tough, only then the tough get going. So Avram grew tremendously from this uh, Akeda. He grew and Yitzchak grew. The Lech Lecha, continue to grow. Go to yourself. Continue to grow. To, to continue to progress. And you have to grow through these hard times in order to reach your full spiritual potential. Very difficult. One of the seven Noahide laws is not to commit murder. Avram. Avram was a good Noahide. God is telling him to commit murder. He doesn't say boo. Big, big theological question over here. Right. Hmm? There's a frightening, scary Rashi over here. Avram, should I tell you the Rashi? Maybe I shouldn't. After the test, then Avram finally speaks up. The Medrash quotes, after the test, Avram finally speaks up. He says, God, what, what, what's it all about? First you told me, you told me my spiritual heir. Then you tell me, take him and kill him. And now you tell me, don't, 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 don't harm him. So God told him, you misunderstood me. You hear this, Ezra? Rashi quotes Chazal. I said, bring him up. I never said, shecht him. I said, bring him up. Now you brought him up. Now what? Take him down. Huh? Avram was supposed to misunderstand. Right? He thought he was supposed to actually do it. But God said, I never meant to kill him. I told you, bring him up. I never said slit his throat. So Avram had to think that in order what? To go through this, this terrible ordeal. Right? But the question is, who sends him on the Akeda? God. Who stops him? A Malach. You don't think that's strange? Hmm? Hmm. Why does God send him and why does Amala stop him? That's the question. And why do we have to know it for? The Mishnah of us says, every time you do a mitzvah, you create a Malach. How does Mishnah know that? 
then you're creating a lot of malachim. Every word of Torah here is nachamitz, nachamit, the meter is ticking. We're creating millions of malachim, we don't even know it. After 120, this way your table's waiting. We'll have this huge red entourage. So the Mishnah says, every time you do a mitzvah, you create a malach. How does the Mishnah know that? Right here. God didn't send the malach. The malach was created throughout the mitzvah of the Akedah. Oh, yeah. And then when he brought the ram, it says malach shenit. What does malach shenit mean? A second malach. Why? Because when he brought the ram, that's a nocha mitzvah. How do you say not? Another mitzvah. So therefore it says Malach Shainit. That's how the Mishnah knows that you do a mitzvah, create a Malach. God didn't send the Malachim. The Malachim were created through the Akedah's one mitzvah. So one Malach was there. Then when he brought the ram instead of his son, there was another mitzvah, Sodek, Vayikwa Malach Hashem, Shainit. So every time we do a mitzvah, we're creating a Malach. And we learned this from the Akedah. So God did not send these angels. These angels were created through the mitzvah of the Akedah and the mitzvah of bringing the ram, the Nacha mitzvah, and therefore there was what? There was another, another, another malach, another malach. Question, Rabbi? Yes. What is the significance of Ishmael and Eliezer having to go with them? They, why did they have to go with them? That's a good question. The Torah mentions that they went with them. So the Talmud learned, that's a great question. To his, to Why do we need to know, Avram, 30 years ago, that Avram took along his two, uh, he took along two other guys. He took along Eliezer and he took along whom? Why is that important? Why is that important? That's a great question. Yeah. I think Rashi asked your question. I think Rashi, yeah. He took his two, why he took his two, why do we need to know for the year 2018, Tari is not a history book, that he went on the Akedah, he went, took along his two servants. Took along, why is that important? Hmm? It makes sure he did it. What? It makes sure he did it. Yeah. No, I think maybe because he would be... Rashi asks Shekashi, Aviezer, make my day. Rashi asks his question. Tari is GPS. How do you say GPS? God's personal system. What does it got to do? So Rashi says, from here you learn out, Shein Adam Choshuv Rashai Lotset Laderech Below Shnei Anoshim. A VIP person should not go on the road without two what? Escorts. That's what it says. If you're a VIP, you don't travel alone. You take two people along with you. Where do you learn it from? Father Abraham was a VIP. Hmm? Huh? Was it a show that they didn't know? Prophecy like his son. Okay. So, so what do you see? I see a mountain. What do you say? A magic cloud? Right. Yishmoel, that they were not up to it. But this is what Rashi says to teach that an a important person should not travel. You ever see a Rebbe without a Shamas Avram? A Rebbe always travels two, not one, two, not a joke. A Rebbe always goes for two Shamosim. Where do you learn it from? Avram's a big Rebbe. Big Rebbe. Don't go alone. Hmm? Okay, very interesting. Very strange. After the Akedah, God says, Now I know you're a God fearing man. Very difficult verse. verse. Now I know? Didn't God know yesterday? Shelly, it didn't bother you? Every year you learn it. Bella, come on. You didn't ask this in Yeshiva? God says to him, Now I know you're a God fearing man. And yesterday he didn't know. So what do you mean now I know? Because that is the hardest thing to know. But didn't God know? God knows the future. Doesn't he know the future? Doesn't he? Hmm? So what do you mean now I know? So the Rambam, all the Rishonim debate this question, how do, how do I really have free will, Daniel? If God knows beforehand how I'm going to choose, how can I choose otherwise? Right? I'm standing outside of a Big Mac stand and I smell the cheese and the, and the uh, meat. Oh, it's tantalizing. I want to walk in. And I don't want to walk in. If he knows beforehand whether I walk in or not, do I really have free choice to go into the hamburger joint? So the Raman says this question has no human answer. How can I really have free will 
if what? It looks like the deck is stacked. He knows everything beforehand. So what kind of feel do I have? Ram says no human answer. <coughs> the Ralbag, the great Rishon and Kabbalist says, I have an answer. <coughs> I get Kabbalistic over here. We're over 40. We can talk. Make believe you're over 40. How old are you? 36. Well, that's close enough. Close enough. <laughs> all the Kabbalists agree. How did God create the world? Tzimtzum. They all agree that. Yeah. How could there be anything? God is everything. All encompassing. How could there be an amoeba? How could there be anything besides him? He's everything. So the Kabbalists, the Ariya Kadosh, of course, says God practiced symptom. He pulled back Kaviyochol. He constricted himself. That's why it's called Gimme Space. Why is it called Space? Gimme Space. God pulled back Kaviyochol into himself in order to give space. Otherwise it could, nothing could exist. Otherwise there could be no universe, right? Gimme Space, right? The Rabbah takes this a step further. Fasting your seatbelts. God loves man so much not to impede, what's the word, impede, limit, hinder, free will. God also practices tzimtzum when it comes to my free will. God says, I want to give you total free will. So I'm going to do tzimtzum. I don't want to know how you'll choose. Surprise me. So God said to Abraham, now I know. Yesterday I didn't want to know. I did tzimtzum. You the Ralbah government, the Tzimtzum. And this is how I can have free will. Total free will. How much God loves man. He allows him this free will where God does, what's the best word Tzimtzum in English, Sarah? Restrict, pull back, yeah, limit, back. limit. Back. It demonstrates how much he loves man that he told Avram yesterday, I didn't want to know how you'll choose. And therefore he could say, he can say now, now I know. Demonstrating how much Hashem loves us. We have a class on Sunday at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.